Hello and welcome to Postgres FM, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I am Michael, founder of PG Mustard. This is Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Hey Nikolai, what are we talking about this week? Hi Michael, I, I thought uh, sometimes it's a good idea to reconsider decisions, you know. And uh, if you choose some some tool or some project to work with, sometimes it's good to look back uh, at recent experience and farther back in the past uh, why you made this decision and think is it still the right decision and should you keep using this product or system or project or anything or tool or it's time to change it yeah i hope you're not having second thoughts you can doubt anything uh, why not just I had on my list of th people I expected to doubt things. Nikolai uh, Samakhvalov doubting Postgres uh, was very, very low down my list. Okay, so by the way, good pronunciation of my last name. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, so honestly, it's not a joke. I'm thinking, should I still use Postgres? And for me, of course, it's a much more fundamental question rather than for like compared to people, even if you, even if you CTO and uh, all your data in Postgres, uh, it's a big question for you to, but for me, it's even a bigger question because a company called Postgres AI and, and, uh, last 19 years, I put all data to Postgres and last, okay, how many years? Postgres consultants, like a source of income depends on, on it. Not only data in Postgres, but also all my activities are in Postgres. And since 2007, so, so, so since 2007, I'm also like community activities, having some community activities, all my thoughts related to professional stuff, very close to Postgres, around Postgres. But I, I must admit I have doubts. So I, what I would like to, for us today discussing our topic, which is why Postgres. Mm -hmm. What I would like to have like doing, doing this discussion is to, I would like to look in, inside myself, raise all the doubts I have. And honestly, if, if the doubts grow and we don't resolve them, I'm ready to switch to different. No, uh, you're not different database system and to different type of business. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Okay. I, well, I'm looking forward to this then. I see huge potential recently. We started growing in uh, like all aspects and it's super interesting. And so many things not, not yet accomplished. I have, I have big ideas. I think I have big ideas to which I must implement and so on, but I also have doubts. Let's talk about them. And if, if they start to overweighing, overweighing uh, these ideas and desire to build and so on, then I'm 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 honestly open to switch. Really, it yeah. also probably so you I, know, I won't be present on this podcast anymore. I'm not joking. <laughs> really. <laughs> so so why let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah. Should we start at the beginning? Like why why. Why did we each choose Postgres initially, both as like users, but also to build, to build tools around, build companies yeah. around, build careers around? It'd be interesting to hear why you chose it, even if it's, I know yeah. we've covered it briefly before, but... Um, you want to start from you or from yourself? Because like... Why not start from you, I think? Sounds good. I, I went to great university in 1998. I think elite, like very good. I'm MIPT. It's in Russia. It's like hard to get into one of the best technical universities. And applied maths and computer science w was focus, but smaller focus starting third grade, you need to choose speciality. I wanted to do hardcore stuff. So I went to kernel and operational systems and so on. But I remember it was a couple of Armenian guys who were, were professors that like responsible for this direction. I went to them, they said, write us a letter, we will respond and 
that's great. So I wrote a letter, no response. I wrote a letter once again, no response. So in my head, I was, I was thinking, damn, like, I tried to be hardcore. Now I'm like, like I, I, I approached like guys who are older than me have experience in, in the same institute and same, same di- subdivision, right? M- many directions, by the way, AI was on, was already one of directions very different than today, of course, but still like neural networks uh, and so on. Somehow it wasn't interested in that direction. I personally once asked like, what's the easiest? And they said, oh, professor for like, which is doing on databases is the easiest. And he's like so kind, you know, like, and definitely it's the easiest. And like, hmm, good. I, I go there. This is how I chose databases. Honestly. Then I started saying, you know, databases are in the heart of any information system. It's where yeah. data is stored and it should be in good shape. If, if it's in bad shape, then like kind of not good. Like everything can be bad, slow and so on. Not efficient or not bad quality, like not secure or something. So many things it's really in the center. Right? I believe in this, but at that time I chose just like by accident. <laughs> so, and then, then I worked with Oracle slightly more than one year with SQL Server, maybe up to a couple of years. And then somehow by accident, I got into startups in 2004, five, and they said, of course, we cannot buy, we have like budget for, to build something. I joined and became CTO, like started growing team and then, and I, I was responsible for all almost all decisions technically. And they said, we cannot afford the Oracle license. Of course, I was a big fan of SQL server and I told them, okay, then we use the most popular open, open source database system, which is my SQL. And you know, I probably mentioned, right. Uh, one week later, I was already almost like quitting because like, it's like ridiculous repair table, zero, 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 zero date. Like I cannot work with it. I have good foundation. Because professor was kind and e- easy going, but it, it also like it was great professor and the best I think in Russia at that time in terms of academia and were very well known books and so on. I was very lucky to to be his student and then PhD student. And his name is Sergei Kuznetsov. He, his name was unfortunately he died recently. So yeah, it, he was a very great guy. And uh, I learned a lot from him. And of course I learned, like I, I, I studied books like Chris Data, it's like kind of simple thing, but also um, uh, Garcia Malina Ullman, right? Which Ullman, right? Which is, uh, the, later I learned these guys are from Stanford. It was unexpected. I thought maybe if it should be from Berkeley or so, but then I also like found uh, they are like already not active, but uh, from Stanford. So many good stuff like uh, uh, relation theory, calculus, right? Uh, these things. Uh, I, sometimes I, I learned many things in Russian. So sometimes I, I'm having <laughs> difficulties finding proper English names. So, but in, in general, I had a good fo- foundation. SQL. At that time, I already learned, like, it's, it's fr- actually from him I learned that NALS is a big problem in SQL model. There is a relational model and there is a SQL model, and they are not completely the same. At, at that time, I studied also SQL standard. It was, I remember, 1992, SQL 92, then 1999, then they started doing this 200N or X, like, kind of not whole big release, but release in parts, right? So, uh, a lot of stuff l- learned there. Standard is hard to deal with for sure. So I like big respect to guys who deal with it. P- Peter Eisentraut and Vic Fearing, right? Right? In, from the, from Postgres Postgres, side, the closest then, yeah. to standard, these two guys, right? Big respect for sure. It's hard. So I was, I was very young, like pff, 20, 21, 22. I was already reading the standard. Then I work with my sequel and what a, piece of something it is actually honestly it like we learned some principles but you touch something and it doesn't work or work in opposite direction then you compared to you learned in oracle and sql 
in SQL Server, of course, there are some specifics, but in general, it, well, both systems were m mature and uh, worked quite well and definitely like grown up systems. My SQL wasn't grown up system. You need to choose at that time, right? You need to choose if it's my sum, repair table, but it lacks full text search and, or you need to do what's the second uh, engine. Engine, so NADB, NADB, right? But it's super slow, mm. super slow. So I, one or two weeks I was on this, and but we just hired a guy from uh, astronomical university from the same place where Oleg Bartonov was. And I think is is still doing some some academia activities. Maybe already know. I don't know. But at that time, so that guy said, I know this guy Oleg Bartonov and. Try Postgres, and everything went like in the right place immediately. I mm -hmm. converted super fast everything, super fast. I, I needed to write additional layer of caching because work. I I had my own ORM at that time. It was before I think current popular ORMs became popular. It was before Django. Oh, it, I think Django and Ruby Pro, uh, Ruby and Rails already existed, but was not were not super popular, and we were using PHP. So, yeah, and uh, so I wrote my, my own, and 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 it had um, a lot of work with metadata. If we, if I quickly switched to Postgres and worked with metadata in Postgres, but it became very slow. Like everything is good, but uh, working with metadata is much slower in, than in my SQL. So I needed to add caching layer for queries to PG class and so on. But this is the only concern. Everything else went like it was like all the pieces of the puzzle in the same. Like where they should be, right? Because it, Postgres probably has issues like replication, like we, we learned later and needed to use Sloney and Londest later. But uh, it works as expected if you studied databases from books, right? From like from theory, theory from switching from theory to Postgres is natural, which was not so for, uh, if you switch from theory to MySQL. This is how I end up actually loving Postgres because uh, it saved me, right? It's free, right? Because we couldn't afford license being a small startup. It's open, like a like open. Maybe I didn't really care that much at that time about openness, but I liked it. Like I, like extensibility, openness, I liked it immediately. And uh, most importantly for me, Things work as expected in terms of relational theory, like there are triggers, the, there are views, right? And uh, like null behavior and so on, like these things uh, as you expect them to be. Uh, re reliable, right? The CID principles, uh, strict, strict system was already very strict to CID principles. It probably was not super performant at that time compared to my sequel my sum but you didn't you didn't lose data <laughs> always. Yeah. except it's a bug right bugs happen of course right yeah so that was like originally why you chose postgres and I, I guess we've gone a little bit into why you continue to choose it in terms of you fell in love with it but why yeah why do you continue to build products and services for it well, this is my personal. I, I've built three social networks. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I was in Russia then two, 12, 12 years ago, um, migrated to the US mm -hmm. and uh, lost my interest to social networks already. But interest to databases was constant all the time. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, Postgres popularity grew. Demand uh, started to grow, I think, in 2014, 15. And this is exactly... Uh, when I needed additional source of income, so I started uh, helping other companies, which started having bigger databases in Postgres, like Postgres databases, and uh, started having troubles. It was natural for me to use my uh, knowledge and desire to work with Postgres, and that interest in into that databases to start a consult consulting practice, and then you know this this podcast was born out of these seeds meetups in the past. And desire to go online uh, with meetup activity because I know people are everywhere. Like, and meetups are only in one place. It's good to meet in yeah. person, but yeah. So, 
it was quite natural, everything was natural. So why Postgres? Because it's just, I have interest, I have opportunity, things like match, and we continue working with it, right? Yeah, perfect. I'm only hearing positives. Ha! Huh. <laughs> yeah. Shall I go through mine quickly, the like reasons for choosing it initially? Mm-hmm. Sure. So yeah. I mean, I, th- I think, yeah, I think they're, I think some of them are quite different to yours, but it's also later. My my journey's later. So I first came across Postgres through work rather than like through academia or anything. Like my degree was unrelated, so I ended up coming across it first while I was working at a database tools company. So I I first fell in love with software and like quite it was almost entirely graphical user interfaces too things like databases. So our biggest divisions at the company were for SQL Server tools. So that was my first experience. And I came across Postgres first as something people started requesting support. Yeah, can you, do you do the same tools? We'd love to buy the same tools from you for Postgres, you know, companies that used and loved our tools for SQL Server were starting to do some projects on Postgres, you know, move not that many migrations at the time, but like greenfield projects, they would often choose Postgres. So this was about that same time that that 2013, 2014, 2015. So it's those years that I started to hear it more and more. And then in late 2014, I actually moved to a startup in London um, who were a payments company, are a payments company, Go Cardless. And their team, there was exceptional engineering team still is mm, um, field, yeah yeah and they love postgres and that really like hearing that bigger companies were starting to use it and then also hit knowing that the cool yc startup scene were also using postgres that really triggered something in me it's like ah oh, this isn't just something like i already knew that it was up and coming i know it's really old at the same time but i already knew it was becoming more popular and that these engineers that were much younger and VC backed startup in the UK chose it and loved it really inspired me to like, I think this could be a platform I'd want to build for this. This could be going places. And also it's clearly a technology that is already like sound and fundamentally sound. If the, all of these companies are choosing it. And I'd also really kind of reacted negatively to some of the other things that had been hyped up at a similar t- like i really couldn't get behind the whole mongodb like the no sequel mm. movement at the time and also do you remember big data do you remember that as like a phase of course. just just really reacted strongly like strongly and negatively towards a lot of the people that were hyping those up because it just didn't mm. seem based on solid foundation Mm -hmm. like on good principles and it didn't make sense to me that these things were needed or like fundamentally better and so when i saw postgres was coming was up and coming and it was based on good fundamentals and they prioritized like i saw a lot of value alignment like you Mm -hmm. i would and I, i think like most people correctness and reliability are more important than performance of course performance matters after that but there's no point it being fast and wrong. Like that's, it's just that priority order seemed so much better in the Postgres ecosystem. But then beyond that, there were loads of other benefits. Like, as you say, free as in price, that's obviously extremely attractive. And I think probably still underappreciated, like actually free, like totally free. And then also the fact it's open from a source code perspective. I've having built tools for SQL Server and Oracle having been involved in teams, having to, you know, research new versions or look back to why things are broken or, you know, all sorts of things. If you don't have access to the source code, I mean, yeah. it's, S- source you don't have access. Many yeah. companies don't understand that. I first uh, felt this, I was like experiencing this insight, what you're just sharing, that source code is like, it's like kind of deeper documentation, right? When I first had it in 2018 helping some company which we are migrating to RDS they were huge already they needed logical replication to mm-hmm. first to Vertica then to Snowflake doesn't matter but 
they considered some tools and one of the tools was maybe one of the popular at that time was click exatunity and the documentation didn't cover so many questions i had and i just just like i realized i i was like talking to my client i just said you know what like if they had a, a source available not open source source available i would just answer myself because i can read code it like, doesn't matter language like i, I could understand find this place for how exactly they create logical slot spending a lot of time and efforts i realized they create logical slot using sql function not uh, replication connection that's what, that was their problem but uh, for me lack of source code means lack of full, like ultimate documentation basically right so ultimate and accurate and up yeah, to date source of truth. all the things source of yeah. truth it's also about transparency if you don't provide source code you always can say oh you we fix this problem but not in all cases but you cannot bullshit if you have source available with all versions and tags and releases you like anyone can see it's about transparency and transparency is why i have doubts in postgres Oh, interesting. Yes. But it's not technical. Let's talk about technical first before before. We... Well, I think we can intertwine them. I've got a couple of other reasons that I chose it that are on the non-technical side. I think when you're building for a, so I uh, I'd worked at places that chose Postgres, but I wasn't the decision maker at those places. You know, it was an already made decision when I worked there. I never chose it explicitly until I started my own business. So it was only then that I mean, when we chose it not just as users, of course, but as uh, as a platform to build on. And because I was trying to build something like long term, it was very much you know. Uh, small, slow, steady, not VC backed, hopefully for decades, that kind of business. I didn't want to build for a platform that there was, that was like, that could shift and change drastically from underneath me. And also that was really at risk of uh, a company changing their mind or changing something drastically. So it's often described as platform risk. And it felt really low with Postgres, not just because it was built on really solid foundations, but also because there's no one company that can, if they, you know, there's no company behind it. There's no commercial entity um, exactly. that is dependent on its success. Like MySQL, MySQL AB, right? Yeah. Or MongoDB, well, but, the company. Yeah. Like all of, if you consider all of the companies that have changed their licenses in the last few years, for example, that's just one mm -hmm. example of how things can shift from underneath you. But also like they could go completely closed source or, or in my SQL's cases, stop publishing test cases, which is like yeah. one step towards like, again, I, I don't think we've had any awful examples where businesses really would have suffered, but they can if there's a single company behind it. And the fact that Postgres was not just, not just had seemingly had policies in place to prevent mm -hmm. that happening, but also seemed to live those values. There, were, There's a real, there's lots of companies that employ contributors and there's real collaboration between those f on new features and on bug fixes and it, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. seemed truly collaborative truly uh, right. a community project even though lots of those community members were I mean, almost all were being paid to work on it it was still a community a group effort between collaborative organizations that could all benefit from it getting better and it it just didn't seem like it was as likely to have a fundamental shift as some of the other platforms out there. It's interesting, actually. It uh, resonates with my idea that sometimes VC-backed company. Well, recently, we discussed uh, companies yeah. which are closing Postgres-like companies, yeah, startups, right? It it resonates with the idea that if you VC-backed, you have pressure, right, and you can have because of that pressure, you can make some unpredicted moves. Unpredicted for your users and customers, right? For example, if you're a great, successful Postgres startup, but not uh, successful enough for VCs, you suddenly can decide to switch license and make more money if you lose some users, right? Yeah. Uh, this is about Postgres, but you apply the same logic for, for we, this is about Postgres startup, Postgres related startup, right? But you apply the same logic to Postgres core. Yeah, as a platform to build on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. 
And if, for example, uh, distributed nature of development, basically, right? Distributed nature of development. But of course, there are some key people. And uh, if they has go, they have gone, for example, disappeared or decide to quit or something, Postgres has, has more chances to survive, right? This is what Bruce Momjohn describes in his talk, will Postgres live forever, right? Because like Postgres was dead several times already and someone picked it. Well, it was dead after it was basically closed in Berkeley. And then it was, it was, it resurrected in the middle of nineties as open source, right? So, yeah. Yeah, you're right. There are a few individuals who contribute a, a huge, huge, huge amount. But it also feels like there are others who contribute hugely too. And obviously, if a few of them or several of them stopped, like when, um, like when MySQL joined Oracle via Sun, and you had the split with MariaDB. If there was a fork like that in the Postgres world for some reason, and several of the contributors all left at once, or one or two really, really big important ones did, I can imagine it being detrimental to the like the speed of Postgres enhancements. But I do think there would be there's still so much momentum, and actually. I don't think, I mean, we could talk about it, but I think feature growth is it really helping with Postgres, but I actually don't think it's as, uh, now that now that it's competitive with Oracle and SQL Server on a bunch of like enterprise and like performance features, it's not as important that we keep innovating as quickly on the feature level. Perhaps things like PG Vector and like some of the, like making sure we're available for new use cases via extensions or via core could be important. But yeah, I'd be keen to go back to you. You already raised, um, do, do you want to cover kind of technical reasons why others are choosing it? Maybe us or others, or do you want to move to doubts and things like that? Yeah, let's quickly cover technical reasons. So first of all, <clears> it uh, acts, it has strong foundation, yep. uh, follows principles, follows standard, uh, not fully, but quite, quite well, M much better than many others. And this is like, it has principles like extensibility, uh, and so on, like these uh, technical things, like uh, the, we, and the uh, extensibility con is constantly bringing new features. Uh, PG Vector relies on extensions framework, right? And it, it's, it has its own life cycle, but maybe it will go to the core at some point, maybe, right? As uh, full text search or XML did in the past, they, they were separate uh, extensions, but then went to core and this means also features are coming 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 that's great or it could it, there's another success case where it could be more like post gis which has been incredibly successful and helpful for the growth of postgres in my opinion and has stayed an extension and i think a lot of people are choosing yeah. post gis and postgres comes along for the ride rather than the other way around and that's really cool and it could be the same in pg vector like people could be choosing pg vector and postgres could comes be. along for the ride in those cases so it, could be. yeah either case could, could be, be a huge success still post js is an interesting example yeah and it's kind of whole different world right but imagine it was part of like postgres documentation doesn't have post js would be Postgres more, even more successful if PostJS was in core and documentation had it. Or, for example, if Timescale, the company decided to go, go all in with Timescale DB and make it super open, eventually contributing it to core. Just imagine, with all compression and yeah. all the stuff and Postgres documentation had it, I know it's not good for their business, maybe, but imagine this world we live in. Postgres has post PostJS, it has Timescale DB, PG Vector, it has everything, right? The level of quality is unified, right? It's like it's being tested all the time in the same manner as Postgres itself, and people don't spend time trying to understand how to 
bring these pieces together and if it's managed Postgres like RDS or something, uh, all the pieces are there already. Yeah, I can see arguments both ways. I've seen people I respect a lot arguing completely the opposite direction. And So maybe we should define what Postgres is. There is Postgres when you just uh, install it with a few extensions, not few, dozens of them, so-called Kadrip modules, right? Yeah. And uh, also CLI, tool, PSQL, and that's it, right? That's it. It also can create a user in your Ubuntu or Debian or CentOS and, and set things up and uh, be installed as service and like, of course, right? But that's it. Uh, there are also super popular extensions uh, which make Postgres very different, like PostJS or TimescaleDB or Post, uh, PG Vector, right? Great. It's also Postgres or no? It's also Postgres, right? Bigger Postgres. I think so. It's like there is Los Angeles, but if you live in, I don't know, Long Beach, you still live in Los Angeles, right? It's like <laughs> there are, there are, yeah, bigger Postgres. The, uh, that's a great example because it depends in what context you're speaking and who you're speaking to and, you know, how familiar they are with the area. If they say, where are you from? But it's, if you, yeah. if you're at a local coffee shop in, uh, near LA and someone asks where you're from, you'll probably be more specific. But if you're mm -hmm. from, you know, if you're in Thailand and somebody asks where you're from, you'll probably just say LA. Yeah. Same so here. It's mm -hmm. Same, exactly the same. We use Postgres, um, uh, but if you say we use Timescale Cloud, uh, you're already like, okay, it's also Postgres, but definitely with Timescale DB and probably without some th things they don't provide, right? So, like, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So there is bigger Postgres. There are also many tools around, like uh, you're building one and we're building something. Right? So these tools, yeah, but a lot of options and it's like quite a rich ecosystem. Great, right? Yeah. So this is also reason why Postgres, because the ecosystem is super rich and growing and great. Although possibly, like, I think that could be an argument against it. Definitely when I first was looking at Postgres, I'd actually say that other ecosystems were a little bit more advanced. There were more people building external tools for some of the other systems. So I do think there's like an, uh, that's not as obvious a one for choosing Postgres in my opinion, but it's great that, that, everyone, that more and more are popping up. The, the last like technical ones I had, well, obviously the extensibility, not just in terms of pre-made extensions, but the fact you could, ex like as a user, you can extend Postgres in various right. ways. I think a lot of people do choose it for those reasons. Of course, yeah. Starting from creation of your own data type to your yeah. own type of index and extensions. And uh, now like even more things uh, up to storage engines and so on, right? Yeah, exactly. I think people can dip their toe in with a new data type and then like gradually get more and more excited by what they could build. And then the last technical one I had on my list was, and this might be more why people stay rather than why people join in the first place, but backwards compatibility is so helpful. Like it's so, because of the good fundamentals and because Postgres has like five year support of major versions, people aren't forced to upgrade like that often and things don't tend to break when they do you know obviously we've we've done episodes on this and there's a lot of complexity around major version upgrades and you do have to re-release notes and things but compared to other systems that are changing you know mm -hmm. compared to other platforms that people are building and building for things like there are major breaking changes uh, in a lot of database major version upgrades and having seen people have to deal with those and have to get stuck on really old versions it's just so much better in the Postgres world. So I think that might be a reason people stay or like maybe for some very smart people, the reason they choose it. But I, de well, I definitely wasn't aware of that when I was first coming across it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So on the, on the doubt side of things, uh, you mentioned transparency. Transparency. As well. Yeah. For me, transparency is the key factor I dislike in Postgres because the source code is open in mailing list. They are open as well. True. But if you look closer and I know like people who just use Postgres, they don't see problems, but I know for sure, not like only based on my experience, but based on many companies, not just one, not just two, many companies, 
people who are in the head of that companies, those companies, postgres related companies, big ones, big names, they feel this lack of transparency in processes. In like Postgres project uh, doesn't apply this principle to itself. Processes so, are not transparent. Question. Yeah. Just to ask what where you're going with this, is it do you do you consider any other alternative projects more transparent and more open, like along this axis? <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not a big, uh, uh expert here. I just, uh, see if like, well, usually organizations which are built, uh, recently, which are quite strong and so on, uh, have kind of democracy, right? They have elections, some rotation of power. When I'm looking at alternatives, if I'm thinking like Software. MySQL, yeah. Redis, SQLite, not, none of those have as far yeah. like I, but it doesn't like, mean, SQLite, it doesn't like, mean there is no problem maybe no no no. I, I'm, no no i'm just uh like the question why postgres partly asks if not postgres what else like oh, they're almost in database the second. or do you I know, know what i mean like if, if you're gonna if you doubt it and then say maybe this isn't it what would it be like what's the alternative yeah good question it can be forked postgres with different principles. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Honestly, I like I. I when I raised in the beginning of this discussion, I raised this. I have doubts. I have them for long. I just wanted to look inside myself and uh, validate. What, but while we are discussing all these things are good, I'm still staying. Honestly, like I already feel yeah, it. I like I'm still s staying with Postgres. But uh, people must know I'm not fully satisfied with things. And at some point, I, I I might say it's enough for me. I, I, I don't feel it right now. I'm very far from yeah. it. But uh, lack of transparency. Yeah. So we've got, we've got lots of reasons why we chose Postgres in the first place. Lots of positives, like still that we would choose it again today and that we do continue to choose it every day. Some areas for improvement, for sure. I don't see a great alternative. Like, I think it's still exceptional and lo love building for it, and I'm hoping to for decades to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I, it'd be cool to hear from anybody that works in or with or, like similar organizations with different governance structures and how those work. I, all I can think of is like benevolent dictator types, you know, Linux and, and SQLite yeah, and yeah. things, but I'm sure there are other good communities like... I think the Kubernetes one keeps coming up as a cloud native. Like, maybe so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there are some interesting ones out there that are run slightly differently. So it'd be great to hear from people that are heavily involved in those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, I, I, in my opinion, the Postgres is definitely one of the greatest examples of open source. And I, I see it as a big bazaar. Right. Yeah. With with one big cathedral in the center, right now, which now I recognize, and smaller cathedrals uh, on this bazaar, maybe. Well, cathedral is one. It's one, right? But it's still bazaar, and no matter what, it, I think uh, it has good chances to be a good bazaar, like uh, with many voices, even if uh, uh, people inside cathedral in the center don't agree with those voices, right? These voices uh, cannot be due to prob probably due to original nature license chosen in nineties and and the original nature of the project itself. Even if there are conflicts, uh, this bazaar will still be huge, and I think uh, it has good chances to be huge with different opinions and sometimes very contradicting. So, yeah, I'm glad it's a bazaar because. I think it's a good good thing, like in open source. You know, I'm, I'm referring to Cathedral and Bazaar by Eric Redmond. Yeah, yeah. I love the analogy, and you've used it multiple times in the past, but it's always been Cathedral or Bazaar. Yeah, but now I see Bazaar with a big Cathedral in the center. There is a Cathedral in the middle. Maybe it's not that big, though. Maybe. It is a Cathedral, but maybe the Bazaar is bigger. And the, but the I feel sometimes this cathedral in the center tries to pretend there is no bazaar almost, or or or, it, it, or this cathedral can define all the rules. It cannot. It cannot define all the rules. 
Have you seen Monty Python? There's Monty Python. I think it's which one is it? Maybe Search for the Holy Grail. Do you, have you seen the Monty Python no. films? No, I think you would like them. My son loves it. He, he okay. tries to convince me for years to watch everything. You have but, to watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. But there's there's one moment where the king is going up to the the, the peasants working the land, and tells them what to do because he's their king, and they're like. I don't believe in a king. I go then, so it's quite funny. I'll, I'll link that up. Yeah, I I should see. So yeah, for sure it will be it will be remain to be a cathedral, and it's good. So yeah, I think uh, thank you for uh, for help validating that I'm, I'm I still want <laughs> to use Postgres. You know, for me I have enough reasons to use Postgres no matter what, no matter what happened. I mean. Nice. Maybe yeah. we'll discuss again in a couple of years and see where you are there. Yeah. And well, yeah. I'm quite positive. I, uh, I will keep using it and help other people to use it uh, in a better way. Me too. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Nikolai. Catch you next week. Bye-bye.